Okay. <clears throat> so you can't actually see the whole building. That's fine. Um, so it's the same building that I drew in. For a watercolor video, but I'm doing it in acrylic. Um, acrylic drawings, paints start the exact same way. And, uh, That's uh, watercolors to do. In fact, it's kind of one inspired the uh, the uh, the way I work in watercolor is inspired by a much earlier way that I used to work in acrylic. It's really scribbly, really scribbly to start off with, uh, because you're gonna build this up in um, acrylics, and the paint is just through. It's actually there. Keep forgetting that the overhangs, so it's like that. Um, my acrylic palette is probably most of the time even more basic um, so I use, this is just a piece of hardboard um, and it's got multiple layers of paint all over it and the colours have got a uh, process blue ultramarine blue some uh, cad red and yellow ochre some titanium white and um, we might add more colors to that as we go but we'll see um, and everything gets mixed with white Hello, water It's not even worrying too much about uh, kind of those lines that we've put down. We're just going to completely fill it up. Okay, and then for the clouds, just going to take some red. Mix them together and you'll get like a purpley colour. Just put white into that. Suppose we move around, we're okay. adding colour. Um, 
I quite often this will get on the board, which is why I would paint on the board rather than on the table. And then for the edges. I'm just going to blend right in there. And then we'll just neutralize that down a bit. And that will also be our dark on the side of the building here. That goes into shadow from the overhanging roof. And the same along here. And we're just trying to use as much as we can. These bits and pieces as we possibly can. And as you notice, I'm barely touching the water. I don't need to. The only time I'm adding water really is when I find it's not kind of flying great, then I'll just add some water. To... And even then, it ends up being probably a bit much water because you can Any water you use, you lose a bit of opacity. Acrylic. And then neutralize it with that. A lot more blue. Because this building here has it's kind of a grey sort of colour. The only colour I haven't put on here is black, which I will use, but um, like I say, it, it goes on pretty fast. I'm not worried about washing our brush too much. I mean, we are if we're going from a really dark colour to a really light colour. But if you're planning ahead, you're not, you know, you're not doing that. And I don't plan, I just you know, hop around the painting. As you can see.
and just every time I'm reapplying I'm just adding some red or some blue to kind of give it a bit more tonal variety and also because the the only paint that there really is is what's on my brush. It's a process. It's a lot more satisfying uh, in some ways than watercolors because you can you can kind of see it build up really quickly. Um, the truth about that is it's blue. Like that. The same all the way around the windows, which usually I would do the window colour first. So let's do that. Typically, windows got quite dark inside. Um, sorry, it's quite dark, and then we've got kind of the blinds. It's just same. It's more or less black, and even here, you kind of got black and then blinds, and then so we're putting those dark colours in first. Not quite going so far as black. I mean, we could go darker. Just grab some red and blue. And like that. And then we've got two that looks like that. And then a lot more blue. There we go. That's probably closer, especially on the bar down here. Um, as I showed, there's some lights inside, so we'll just drop those in and then we'll kind of... And you can always, if you're not happy with things, kind of take them out with your finger. Um, because, because you can. <laughs> Okay, that's a brownish, which we want. A bit more ochre. There we go. We are. Stone work above the windows. Um, we then need that a bit lighter for down below. A little bit more ochre. And then we've got stone work. Look here, back here. And what we're not putting is the fact that that's all stone there. But not on the other side because it's all been <laughs> rendered. Right. Not doing the same here. And here. 
here we have to leave a gap there for some white can you see how it's all really quickly building up now it's an image Um, obviously we're going to put a bit more colour in some of these bits and we still need to do all this but And in terms of how much paint I'm using, it's probably half as much as my tutor probably would have told me to use for a scene. Um, not that he taught me how to paint a scene, it just... People would put down the amount of paint I put down and go, no, more! And we were just doing colour swatches on... We're just doing colour swatches um, in a sketchbook, an A3 page, not even filling the whole A3 page. Good to have put more down, more paint down than that. Um, so yeah, in terms of you know that. But yeah, we'd be told to put down paint. But try if we tried to get away with using so little. Um, it's just how our tutors were, I guess. They didn't want us to be precious with paint, which you can be if you don't put enough down. I am trying to be economical with my paint. Because I know how much I can use for a painting, so if I need more, I'll put more down. But I know I, I don't really. I know how much I need, without being economical. Yeah, when you're learning, you don't want to use too little paint because if you have to rematch, it can be hard. Like, for instance, that already. Let's put 
some stuff down for the window there. It hasn't dried out too much, you can add a little bit of water and that'll just activate it. Pop. I'll just pop it here. Like so you just want the sea views in the uh, the water level because I don't use compared to watercolor where the media is water effective acrylic is the media is um, uh, acrylic. I'm going to wash my brush out because I want a green. I don't know if I get a good green with brushes. I'll struggle to get a good green anyways because <laughs> because we're using yellow. Okay. There we go. I want to say a good green. I mean, a really vivid. There we go. Uh, I don't know why I washed it up there. That's something blue back there. It's like um, a recycling bin or something. Uh, on top of that little cupboard. Um, and we're not trying to chase away all the underdrawing because because really that just adds to the character since we've got blinds um, just use the side of a brush like this. Because you want to put them, you don't want to put any detail in the window before you start building up like the frames and stuff. So, um, we don't have anything in this one, we do it this one. And we'll just not worrying too much, it's not really you know. I know you can't quite see that window that leads into there I'm not worrying too much about it I'm just Putting in some texture of these stones because the individual stones, but we don't want to waste, don't want to spend any actual time doing them. So, literally, just like that. And then put in these details so I've got an outer frame that's blue and then we've got an inner frame which is white and 
them all. This is the uh, you can either move sideways like that, or not strokes downwards. I mean, it makes a little difference, but. Stones for the bottom chimney part. Chimney. And that's a chimney. <coughs> really, really fast chimney. This bit is like more blue than that. Um, and then I'm just drawing straight through that paint, and that'll give us a texture. That's it. So if you wash your brush, you just want to make sure it's dry. Because these are system free. Um, apart from the blue I've used, which is a Winston and Newton, which literally makes no difference. And Uh, a bit more on the sky. Yeah, we've got that's white. That's white, and then we've got you knock it to the point of roof. Um. Okay, uh, I'm really struggling with what that chord that is. Can you see it on here? It just looks, you know, dark. So, I'll just do dark. <laughs> And then it goes across like that. And then we've got from here just coming out to the side. Then coming down is the uh, drain pipe. Um, you can't see the drain pipe on the dentist as much because it's white. But we can put it on. But yeah, just underneath. There, we want to just have a shadow. And that too. And we keep forgetting to put that alarm on. I say we, me. It's only me here. It will come up. Just looking for a clean place to make sure it's kind of ingrained in the brushes. Let's 
let's go line that comes from that one down and that's cut this connection that comes down that's technically open but it's like that uh, and then the door which we can't it's in the dark a little bit of bronze which is just that a little bit of that and that kind of comes out and kind of loops around there's something to hold on to mm -hmm. Gray. If you look carefully, move it across. The reason why we can't see the stem that's on the rest of the building is literally because you can see it here, it has been whitewashed. That has got our information on. Just do a few dots. Okay, neutralize the original patterns. This comes down. There's all sorts in that window. I'm not gonna not concentrate on that, we just want to make sure it kind of fits in. That roof is roofy. There. And like I say, this is this building. This is the building we're focused on. It's not necessarily 100% accurate to that, but it's not about being accurate. Perfection. Perfectionism can kill creativity, so it, it's approaching very much the same way that I approach. Uh, Thirty-three minutes isn't bad either. Um, that's all we're into it at the moment. So this is not system free, but system free is fine to use. This is just a cheaper paint I have. It's neo acrylic, but like Gerstacker. Anyway, you get it from Great Art. Okay, we just grab that and a piece of bent or bald whatever grab a pen 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 paintbrush that goes so long gone this is like a chinese style one and to help it flow i put it on a piece of card so then i can twist it and i can hold the piece of card as i move around when I'm painting this, it's not as important, but I can use it to help steady myself. And we're literally, like I say, it's, it's this, although the method of doing the you know, underdrawing is older and what he used to use for my acrylics I used to paint over that so it could be seen now I don't bother because I like it and it adds to the painting you know but I didn't use the kind of black outlines that I use now and you can You 
can work with this quite quickly, quite freely. Um, and you can get thin lines, thick lines, all depending on how much you load up and brush. Like I say, this as a method of painting has recently has gone leaps and bounds, whereas um, my, my watercolour at the moment is a bit stagnant. This still feels quite fun at the moment. There's more of what I mean. Uh, yeah. yeah. I guess that's what I mean. This is still quite fun. Um, it takes a little bit longer than the average watercolor does, but. Especially as the average size painting I do like this is A4. Um, this is an A5 envelope, so it's what, C5. I mean, it, you know, that is a number. I don't, it, C5 defines a number that you can look up, it's slightly bigger than A5. Um, because, you know, an A5 piece of paper would fit inside this. And this is even more about being fun and playful than the uh, than the uh, watercolor is because it, it is fun to do. I know you may not always hear the kind of fun and enthusiasm in my voice, but. Uh, that, that, that's the joys of kind of being autistic spectrum disorder. Oh, but... I've got an hour. I wanted to do today was <laughs> I went to write a thousand words. Um, that feels unlikely at the moment because um, for an hour, we're off to take my son to the doctors. He's got conjunctivitis. Just killed my day really. Um, so. 
this one having conjured devices and I need to hit the shot because I need to get some flour because I'm going to make a chicken and mushroom pie dinner so right now there we go so that's taking me what 40 minutes from turning on so i want to make dinner i've still got to I've still got to so it's dinner doctors and I want to make it right fast and words don't know how that was possible and then all I do with the excess paint is start on the basis of an abstract painting so I'm not saying it's going to be a good abstract painting, just, you know, it's, <laughs> if nothing else, it's uh, a good undercoat to do a painting on, because the problem with grey board like this is it's quite, it's got quite high absorption, and the acrylic paint acts as a barrier, so although this isn't any stretch of imagination good or finished or anything it's kind of that idea that it's not wasted um they, they do build up you know after several like i said i don't think i'm any good by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to an abstract but um, th th this is how I'm learning it alongside painting kind of more serious sort of scene but yeah that's kind of so what I'll do now is um, I'll just finish putting down those last bits like we've done this uh, yeah the last one then Yeah, uh, oh, my name. Good idea. And then it's really important. <laughs> this is a separate sketch. To just poppy name somewhere. So, like, find the line. There we go. Um, so that really is this t uh, it this time. I'm gonna go wash these brushes properly in the sink with soap and water. Um, zoom out of this so you can see the building. Um, and that's my paint for today. Um, this is bonus film because I said I'd do it when I did the watercolor painting. And you can see this is a lot richer than the watercolor painting. It's a lot more. Yeah, it's got a lot more going on. And this is what I'm trying to work back into the watercolor painting, and there's that element of opacity and colour that's hard to work back in, and I need to work it out. And it's taking its time. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.